The next couple of videos you'll see um, basically go through some really fascinating financial applications of geometric sequences, some stuff perhaps that you can relate to and or maybe in your near future you'll be able to relate to, some, maybe some things you've always wondered about and maybe money is interesting to you. Because as we saw with arithmetic sequences we can also um, look at some money analysis with geometric sequences. So first one we're going to look at is compound interest and then after that on this video we'll look at depreciation. Uh, in the next few videos we'll look at things like annuities and loan repayments and so on. You might recall from your earlier financial math studies compound interest um, the, the further you go into the loan or the investment the more interest you get. Just by way of a simple example if you start off with a principal of a hundred dollars and you are investing at 10% per annum. The accumulated amount, which is often given the symbol A, the amount that your investment's worth basically starts off at 100 and it, it increases by, well remember 10% is 0 0.1 as a decimal, so it increases by the amount of interest. So in the first year we've got 1.1 to the power 1. Now why is it gone from 0.1 to 1.1? Well that's the extra, so it's an extra 10%, so it's like saying 110% of the amount. It has to start at 100% of itself, that's self-evident, but the extra 0.1 as a decimal or 110% the 10% extra looks like that, and so we get an extra $10. And for bigger amounts of money, just multiply it up. If it was $100 million, it would be $110 million. In the second year, so after the first year, we don't base our principal on the $100 anymore, because that would be like simple interest, where you, this is compound interest. So that 110 becomes our new amount. And again, we do that. So that's another $11 on top. That would be $121. And we can keep going in that vein. That'd be an extra $12.10. $132.10. Whoops, sorry, $133.10, my bad. So <clears throat> you can see here that we've got different size jumps, and it's not a linear progression, it's not a linear jump, it's not the same amount as it would be in simple interest. These amounts are bigger, and if we look at successive amounts over the top of each other, the 121 over 110, if we calculate that, and I'm doing that right now, and we get 1.1. If we get 133.10 over 121, so the next term over the previous term, I'm just calculating that now at the side here, and we've got 1.1. So we have a common ratio. We could keep going in that regard, and the common ratio would be 1.1. So also noteworthy um, is that by the time we get down to here, we could rewrite this one here in a different way. We could rewrite it in terms of the original amount, the $100, and it's been times by 1.1 times 1.1. So it's happened two times there. So that would be like 100 times 1.1 squared. Or cubed, I should say. It's been done three times. One, two, and three. So we have all the makings of a geometric 
sequence or a geometric progression. We can look at it in this form here. And this form is related to t of n equals a r to the n minus 1. It's related to that, it has the same form. So, for example, at the beginning of the first year, we would have a, which is the principal, which in our example is 100, times by the growth rate, which was 1.1, and it was to the 1 minus 1. So it would be 100. Uh, anything to the power 0 is 1, so it would be 100 times 1. So that's what we start with. So that's these numbers here give us the amount at the beginning of each period. So thus we would have to write it as t sub n equals a r to the n to get it at the end of each period, to get the balance at the end of each period. Now the R is, if we looked at how we got the 1.1 before, we had to explain that this equated to 100%, so anything plussed on to that is the growth factor, so if we have R as a percent, we had it as 10% before. These are in percentages, so that would make the 110% or the 1.1. Got an example here. Uh, Mata invests $2,500 at 7% per annum compounded annually. So the examples we'll look at um, here will be compounded annually. It is possible to get things to compound more often than that, like quarterly, monthly, and so on. Uh, we're going to stick to annually here. So <clears throat> that matches the per animal per year interest cycle. So we don't need to convert our interest rate. So we've got P equals 2500. We've got our R as 7%. And we've got to find A sub 5. Now, because it's at the end of each cycle, it's not n minus 1 as it is with the other geometric sequences. It's after 5. So we, with this formula, it's been adapted to just use n. So the 5 and the 5 will match. 2,500. Now, what is r? So r is, well, a bit misleading what I just said. r is not 7, but it's 100% plus 7% because it's got to be a growth rate so it's 107% which comes out as 1.07 as a decimal so just being a bit more precise there and that's raised to the power 5 and we calculate that so after 5 years Marta has $3,506.38 Part B How long does it take until her investment is worth $10,000? Okay, so well, I'm going to write my rule down and let's see what we're given and what it's, the unknowns are. And well, $10,000 is what we're aiming at, so that's going to be the accumulated amount. Principal is $2,500, the rate is 1.07, and the unknown is the index. So I'm going to call that N, the number of years. Basically, you have what's called an initial equation because the unknown is the index. What you can do is uh, divide both sides by 2500, so 4 will equal 1.07 to the n, and now we've got to find a solution to this. So you've got three ways, depending on what level of maths you're at when you're watching this video. Logs is probably the most efficient way. Trial and error is easy, but you know, you've got to be sensible, otherwise it can take a really long time. And you can use your graphics calculator too, if you're allowed to. In this video, I'm going to assume that we haven't uh, studied logs to any great detail and we're not able to use our log laws. So I'm going to show you how to do this on the graphics calculator. So if I go back to that line there and we go to our graphics calculator, if we're permitted to use one, and we can see that in here we've got 
couple of equations. So 2500 times 1.07 to the x, and we've also got 10,000. So let's see where they come from. What we're doing is making, it's like making two equations equal to, the, to each other, with the left hand side equals the right hand side, we're going to find the point of intersection. So here we go, we've got, we can see a point of intersection there with the two graphs I've graphed again. 10,000 with the other equation, like so. So on a TI Inspire, you go, when, when you've got a big enough window, you can see everything, you go to Analyze Graph and Find Intersection. So this is the lower boundary, somewhere above the upper boundary, and it's detected an intersection there. Let's move um, the numbers so we can see them. So 1 times 10 to the power 4 is that 10,000, and it's happened at 20.5. Just going to see if there's not more decimal places there, so right click attributes. I'm just going to use a few more significant figures there. Okay, so it depends how many decimal places you want. You could say it's 20.49 if you're happy with two decimal places. So Marta's investment goes from 2500 up to $10,000, but it'll take 20.49 years approximately. Or if the bank or whatever won't let you pull the money out, it'll be after the 21st year. Uh, then you can pull your money out if you wanted to reach 10,000. So what some people do is actually borrow money on something that depreciates. So if somebody borrowed $20,000 for a car, from the previous example you'd see that they'd be paying back somewhat more than $20,000 after a few years. But that's not the only thing that's happening, the car will also depreciate. So that means it loses value when you try and sell it as it gets older. So, if we can assume, say, another simple example of 10% per year, that works in a compounding or a geometric sense, but it works in the opposite way, in a sense, to the compound interest. So, first year, or when you first have received the car, it's worth 20000 and then the, we've basically got a rate which is taken from 100%. And if it's got the 10% off, we have 90% after one year. So after one year, we've got that times 0.9. Just to speed things up, I've gone ahead and looked at those values. And so it's originally 20,000. After one year, it's worth 18,000. And then it's worth 18. After another year, it's worth 16,200. So that's the next value times by the 0.9. So we have we have 0.9 there which is our common ratio <clears throat> and so we have a geometric progression. You can see all the numbers so the, the value of the car each year is are the, um, are basically the terms in the geometric progression and note that, that it's uh, there's an equivalence here basically we've got you can also get every term by looking at the original value of the car and multiplying it out. So you can see that it's quite similar to what we saw just above in the uh, compound interest. So basically you can see it's a very sim similar formula. In fact, you know, you could use an A there if you like, just like previously. I wouldn't get too worried about the symbols, but you can see that we have um, a geometric progression there. The main difference is the uh, the interest rate. It's 100% minus the percentage, so 100 minus 10% in the previous example. Let's really quickly now look at an example. A machine bought $15,000, depreciates at the rate of 12.5% per annum. What will be the value be? What will the value be after nine years? And then how many years? will it take, um, after how many years will its value drop, in other words, below 10% of the original cost? Ooh. So here we go, we've got the formula written, we've got to find D sub 9, 15,000 times, okay, let's work out the interest rate, there it is, so 0 
the decay factor, in other words, 0 0.875, and we have 9 there. So it's a simple matter of calculating now that everything's been subbed in. So that machine's worth $4,509.87 after 9 years. So how long will it take for its value to drop below 10% of the original cost? So if we put that 10% in, um, that would be $1,500 equals 15,000 times 0.875 to the N, and basically we divide through by 15,000, so that would leave 0.1 equals 0 0.875 to the N. Now assuming you don't know logs, um, that would be the most efficient way. You could solve again. Uh, like you saw with a trial and error or graphics calculator or go ahead and use logs if you know how to take logs of both sides just for some variety I've put in the logarithmic solution again if you haven't studied logs sufficiently yet you can use a graphics calculator for this you get 17.24 years so that means that in the 18th year or after about 17 and a quarter years if it's a yearly cycle you'll have to say um, during the 18th year when it hits that 10% value.